right, 734 time. Hello, everybody. I'm Jason DeRush. It's great to have you with us on this rainy, rainy day. Just looking out our window here. Yeah, raining behind me in downtown Minneapolis. Here's a sky view. So this is what we call we show you something and then we prove it. The weather watcher is green, which means rain on the way. And look, there's rain on the way. Confirmed. Yeah. And here's your 730 forecast today. It's trash. It's a trash day. Like, that's fine. Like, not every day is going to be great. You know, if Riley were doing the 734, he would point out that you're getting a free lawn watering because he is rainbows and sunshine. I'm real talk. This day is trash. I know my kid has a soccer training this morning. I hope he has to go do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, toughen these kids up a little bit. Sometimes you play soccer in the rain, kiddo. It's not all uh, bunnies and kittens and rainbows in this world. So get out there and tough it out. Of course, that's what I say from a climate-controlled studio and a roof over my head. That's how it goes. So it's going to be raining off and on all day today, so uh, be ready for that. Let's talk about this. More Minnesota cities are requiring face masks indoors. Duluth and Minnetonka join the growing list. Both cities passed ordinances at council meetings last night. And I think a lot of us are watching to see if there's going to be a statewide mandate. The governor has asked his team to look at data from other areas to see what happened if requiring masks made a big impact. So we're asking what you think. Should there be a statewide order? Should it be county by county? Or should there be no mandate at all? What do you think is the right move here? I think you'd like to see people just do this on their own. But the truth is, sometimes you need the government to say, this is what we want you to do for people to do it. So we just wonder what you think about this, where your head is on masks. Are you wearing them? Uh, Minneapolis, we talked with Mayor Jacob Fry today. They have a mask mandate, the first city to do it. I was out at an ice cream shop in Minneapolis yesterday. Everybody had masks on. Didn't seem like that big of a deal. Um, so anyway, share your comments. I don't know if you need that in some parts of the state where we have very few cases. Uh, so let us know what you think. Hospitalizations and deaths from COVID-19, they're down in Minnesota. Cases are going back up. The state confirmed almost 500 cases yesterday. Now that's a big drop from the 700 plus we saw on Sunday, 800 plus on Saturday. There were two more confirmed deaths from COVID-19. Minnesota health officials are really keeping their eye on restaurants and bars. Bars have seemed to be a spot where we've seen a spread of coronavirus. So they're trying to keep people safe and also keep the economy going. So that does mean uh, wearing masks and keeping the appropriate distance, maintaining that social distance between tables. Customers asked to help out as well. The department says it will follow up on complaints from the public. Because what we want to avoid is what's happening in California. They opened up, business started coming back, and now they're shutting it down again. And this is devastating for a business to open, close, open, close. Governor Gavin Newsom ordered indoor operations for much of the state to shutter a second time. Bars, restaurants, houses of worship, all done. This coming as more than 40 states are coping with higher infection rates. Uh, this story is really upsetting. An Egan family hoping that you can help find a bike that was built just for them. And maybe whoever stole this will be guilted into doing the right thing. This bike was stolen last week. It belongs to Eugene Tregg. Eugene Tregg is a Vietnam War veteran. He's partially blind. His daughter has seizures sometimes, so neither of them can drive. He says he had this bike, custom-made bike, used a cable to lock it to a cement pole in the garage of his apartment, but it just wasn't enough. When I happened to look and, and see that it was gone, I just, I started crying because I just, it's the only thing that my daughter and I have to get around. I mean, it's just infuriating, right? Like, whoever did this probably didn't realize who they were doing this to. Eugene says, just to pile on here, his wife has terminal cancer. She can't drive either. This bike, custom built, costs several thousand dollars. So if you did this or you know who did this, just, like, just bring it to the police department and drop it off. 
you, I'm sure no one cares that you get in trouble for this. Let's just get the bike back to Eugene. Uh, he needs it. Officials are confident that they have recovered the body of former Glee star Naya Rivera. This story just absolutely rips your heart out. 33 year old mom, uh, just her four year old son, by all accounts, was her everything. They were out on this rented pontoon Wednesday. Yesterday, divers did find her body floating in the area of Lake Piru, where she was last seen. This uh, image here, cast members from the TV show Glee, who gathered at the lake, very touching there. But investigators saying it looks like Naya Rivera saved her four-year-old son's life, hoisted him back into the boat, and then she went under. It seems like that pontoon maybe wasn't anchored, started floating. There was trouble in the water. And that's what happened there. Just absolutely devastating. Okay, let's talk about the state of Minnesota being in near drought conditions in parts of our state. I want to show you a map that gives an idea as to just how dry parts of the state have been. You know, here in the metro area, we've had some decent rain over the last couple weeks. But look at northern Minnesota. Very, very dry central parts of the state. Same deal. If you live in those areas or vacation there or have a cabin there, you, I'm sure your lawns are crispy. Uh, and the lakes are turning green. So a lot of us have wondered, okay, what's going on with these green uh, algae blooms on our lakes? And it is the dry condition that creates it. And green algae can be a concern for pet owners. Blue green algae blooms, especially toxic for dogs. Some like Sock Lake and Sock Center. We've had a, a call or two on uh, some blue green blooms that have occurred. Washes up on shore, looks kind of a blue green. Imagine that like teal. Um, it washes up on shore and it's something that, you know, dogs can certainly get sick from and we don't recommend people ingest it or swim in the stuff. Yeah, I mean, here's a pro tip. If you see a big floating thing of algae, you might want to find a different place to swim. Uh, probably you don't always see it if you have your dog going in and running around in the lake. DNR says uh, rain contains nitrogen which helps balance out the naturally occurring phosphorus in lakes and rivers. During summers with less rain, the phosphorus kind of runs rampant. You see out the algae blooms and there's the science behind the yuck. Uh, speaking of yuck, keep a close eye on your garden. We've got a new pest here in Minnesota. Why not 2020? Just throw some other garbage at us and here comes the lily leaf beetle. Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she? Bright red, looks so nice. You think, hey, look at this pretty Pretty bug, welcome to my yard. And then this stupid bug kills all your lilies, destroys your garden. Somebody uh, saw this in St. Paul, and after apparently taking incredibly beautiful macro uh, lens photos of the beetle, reported it to the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, and experts say this beetle can completely destroy your garden. Not partially destroy, it's completely. You spot one, you can report it to the state. We have information on how to do it on our website. I've had the Japanese beetles, and those things just feast on some of the leaves. We, uh, if anybody has beetle destruction tips, I want to hear about it. Uh, tax day is tomorrow. I did my taxes like in February. Why wait? But some people, because of coronavirus, the state, you know, the federal government wasn't able to process all these anyway, because all the IRS people are working from home too. So they slid the deadline from April 15th to July 15th, which I just feel bad for tax preparers. Like if you're a tax preparer, your life is miserable in uh, March and April. And usually in the summer, you're like, thank goodness I don't have to deal with idiots like Jason and his r ridiculous tax return. And now people have to do it. Those poor tax return people, preparers, I feel for you. Uh, but tomorrow's the day, so get it done. Coca-Cola wants to keep the freestyle uh, drink vending machines running without coronavirus worries. You know these machines where you go up and there's like 4,000 different choices for what beverage you're gonna have dispensed? and you touch the thing and it never works and you're like, I want to put lime in my Fanta and then I want to mix it and you're just like <laughs> like that. Touch free now. <sighs>
Maybe finally I can get a glass of water without having to stand behind some 11-year-old kid who's like, and now I'm going to put some Minute Maid in here. How about ginger ale? Ugh, now you got a QR code, so that means your parents aren't going to know how to use that, so that'll be perfect. Uh, but you can do it via an app, so you don't have to touch it. They've tested it at some Wendy's, Five Guys, Firehouse Subs down south, so now they'll roll out this as a software update by the end of the summer, and hopefully they'll have the whole thing set by the end of the year. Do you know how I feel about those freestyle <clears throat> machines? They drive, Chris, they drive you nuts too, <laughs> don't they? You just can't even figure out how to get water out of them. I just want just a glass of water. And you've got some kid who's making like the <laughs> ultimate cup. I got it. And I'm gonna put some of this and, and some of that. And like, oh my gosh. All right, oh, play that. the music. There we go. All right, we're talking about masks. People, Chris, I imagine have opinions. Yeah. <laughs> They do. Ah. All right, um, lay it on me. Most stay people are saying no, no to the mandate. No for a statewide mask mandate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, has anyone called me a sheeple for wearing the mask? Uh, Here let's we see, go. where was that? Uh, Shane said, Shane. do not become a sheep in the Come herd. on, Shane. You, come up with something more original. <laughs> Why do you have to pair it like the dumbest thing pop? Hey, you bunch of sheeple. Come on. Like, call me like a squirrel or a rabbit or something different. Something I don't better. Know. Mix it I up, people, with your canned insults. It's not sheeple when you're following the advice. You're not being a sheep when you follow the advice of public health officials. I mean, you can argue about whether or not masks make a difference. I think scientists have opinions uh, on that. But we really don't know, right? Like with most of this stuff with coronavirus. But all the evidence right now points to masks you know, they don't solve the problem, but they're better than no masks, that's all. Well, so Karen was said no, unless the entire state is informed as to how to wear them, because most people wear them wrong. Uh, I do see a lot of people so. wearing them like as a beard, instead of over their nose. But again, like, isn't something better than nothing? I don't know. I just, I don't want people to be the mask police. I know like if you're a, if you're a big mask wearer, which I am, we, mer we I wear the mask uh, often and always if I'm going out. Um, try not to worry so much about, you know, it just, people get so mad when you see someone without a mask. Uh, we're all doing our best. Statewide mask mandate, we'll see. I bet they do county by county. That, I think that'd be a smarter way to do it. Uh, that's it for the 734. Appreciate you hanging out with us. We'll see you again tomorrow.